the, the job I, I had after uh, I worked with you, or, or maybe it was, uh, anyway, I was, I was living alone, um, doing this job in this, you know, nice apartment and emotional and, and, and you know, and, and uh, it's obviously a pandemic and, <laughs> and I was happy to be working. I felt lucky to be working. Uh, my partner was home. Uh, his mom had visited and then she was sick with COVID and he was taking care of her. And there was just a lot going on. The world was, the election was, was just a night, you know, there was so much going on. This is probably late October, mid, mid, mid to late October. And the Goodman Theater was streaming Death of a Salesman with De Brian Dennehy. And I haven't been watching a lot of these offerings, you know, I've, I've been, because, you know, a lot of times, in, you know, some of the, offer, the offerings, it's, it makes you so melancholy because it's exciting for a second and then you realize, oh yeah, that's right, we're still doing still doing online theater and 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 uh, but i was like i saw this on broadway it was really good and it really meant a lot to me um brian denny he's gone and i just thought he was such an amazing actor i'll watch it and i watched it and i and i remembered every moment from from when i'd seen it on broadway and and i i was sobbing immediately and throughout and what they do in that um in that play, in that production, but but in that play, and what we do on stage, what actors do on stage, that's different from a movie or a television show, or in many cases, a Zoom play, uh, especially like a Zoom reading when when two people are in a box acting with each other. You cannot, you know, what you cannot do, or what what you don't have to do, is put it together, and. Brian Dennehy and all of the actors in that Death of a Salesman, you watch them put, you, went, you watch them go from A to B to C to D. Um, they put it together. Now in a movie, you're put together later. An editor puts you together. The director puts you together later. In, a, in, in television, the same thing. Even in, a, even in like multi-camera uh, television that's in front of an audience, they put that together later. Right. Um, and on stage, you're your own editor. You put it together yourself. And I do think that is a skill that can be taught because I have worked with actors, great actors, great actors. I mean, because I have worked with great actors who on stage don't realize that that's a thing. And they don't, they don't know how to do that. Or you watch them, you've seen them on TV and you think, oh my gosh, they're a great actor. I'd love to see them in a play. And you see them in a play and they don't do that. It might still be good. It might, it doesn't necessarily ruin the performance, but that is something, that is the thing I, I think the moment to moment acting, that's a technique that I think can be taught. And I remember like, that's something I learned at school. You know, I didn't learn how to get a laugh, but I learned. Uh, right. Do you think that the person though requires emotional availability? That they have to be willing to have emotional availability in order to be truthful? Because if you can't be truthful, then it's just fake. And I think you can't be fake on stage. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's true. No, I think you're right. I think that's true. I think that I think that you do have to have truth and emotional availability. But I think that's true to be good on on TV and film too. Yeah, sure, of course. But it, but, but, you, but it can happen on accident on TV and film. Yeah. You know, like you right. can accidentally be brilliant in a movie, and that's and, not, it's not you know that's not discrediting any any. No, 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 no. Of course not. It's just a different medium because you can be much more manip manipulative because you have so many more people controlling the performance. Whereas right. when you have that live intersection, you know the actor. Um, speaking of which, by the way, you did say the code word, which was nightmare. Michelle, are you there? I want to watch this, and we have time. This is a clip from the Drama Desk Awards where you were hosting. And it is a kind of a send up of a wonderful Christopher Durang play called in the, An Actor's Nightmare or The Actor's Nightmare. But also you, you appeared in the signature theater production of Angels in America playing prior. Um, and um, let's watch this clip, Michelle. Michael, you're good until 8 p.m. Okay, great, thank you. I'm just gonna take your mic off. Go for it, thank you. Michael, <clears throat> here's yes. a card about the presenter for featured actor. <laughs> I think that's funnier. I agree. That's why I wrote it. Okay, great. I'm gonna take a little nap if that's okay with everybody. Yeah, I'll put a sign on your door. Okay, thank you. Better one hour. I just need you for the carpet at 7.45. Okay, great. Are you nervous all these industry people? Oh, coming? no, no. It's a great crowd. It's not like Bernie Telsey's gonna be there. <laughs> no, he will. His company is nominated. Oh. Why 
wish I didn't know Bernie Telsey was out there. Hold. I wish I was an octopus. Eight loving arms and all those suckers, you know what I mean? Ah. Uh, Do you know what I mean? Joe. Joe? No. No, that's right. You don't. Aileen! Roy Cohn. Now, what kind of greeting is that? Why is Mary I Testa playing Roy Cohn? Oh, God, I don't know these lines. You're upset. I think I'm having an actor's nightmare. Oh, hold. <laughs> so brilliant. It kills me. And Mary Testa is hysterical, and I'm afraid of her. I'm afraid to bring her into a rectangle here. You should. She'd be so great, but she's, she's awesome and tough and one of the best. Well, just one of the best. I mean, and she, you know, like that, she didn't get paid for that. That was just a video we made for the Drama Desk opening. And, and she came and she, and she learned all those lines and, uh, and, and she was so good. She wore, she wore her suit and um, that was on the set of Musical, the musical. Uh, that was a very funny play that ran. And, and yeah, so every year for the Drama Desk, I would do those videos. Um, and um, uh, that was shot, the, the, so the black and white section that's backstage, that was supposed to, it was supposed to dummy for Town Hall where we do Drama Desk, but we shot it um, at Juilliard. So that's actually the backstage at Juilliard. Oh, really? And oh, right. Stephen DeRosa playing the writer, right. um, the great actor Stephen DeRosa, but all those other people were students from Juilliard. Wonderful, just wonderful. Yeah, I mean, I, I love that clip. I love to watch that. I, I remember having, having seen it as well. And um, and of course, Christopher Durang, one of the funniest satirists and you know, wonderful. Um, but um, but Mary rem reminds me that I'm sorry. That actor's nightmare thing is real. You must have them as a director, right? Of course, people just blank. They just go blank. Hey, guess what? That introduction that I did, that I usually record, because I don't usually do, I'm usually not on the other side of the conversation. I farm them out to my colleagues, Murphy and Jeff and Richard, um, partly because, you know, it's, it's a lot more work <laughs> being on the other side. But that opening that I just did live with no script in front of me that I usually read, and like, I forgot it. I rehearsed it like five times when I came in with Michelle and I did it, I totally went blank. So I understand that, that whole thing. I mean, like God bless Angela Lansbury appearing on stage and, you know, memorizing lines or, or Maggie Smith or Judy Dentry.